This is from The Three Principles of the Divine Essence by Jakob Burma, 1619. The first principle is hell, the second principle is heaven, the third principle is the material world. From chapter 5. If the reader is born of God, there is no nearer way to come to the knowledge of the third principle than by considering the new birth, how the soul is newborn by the love of God in the light, and how it is translated out of the prison of darkness into the light by a second birth. All that has been born in this third principle continues eternally in the matrix, and if a man has, in this lifetime, not been reborn into the second principle, then he shall remain eternally in the matrix, yet not reach the light of God. The matrix is inanimate and void of understanding, and in this world there is no true understanding, either in the stars or in the elements and in all its creatures there is only an understanding of how to operate, to nourish itself, and to increase in the matrix. Hereupon you are to know that the matrix in the second principle is an eternal, uncreated spirit which has no such fiery and tolerable light as is found in the first principle, but all there is pleasant and cheerful, and the eternal original matrix is not known there but the soft light of the heart of God makes all courteous and cheerful. Man would not have known the original fiery matrix if he had not eaten the fruit thereof, whereby the matrix presently took hold of him, captivated him, qualifies in him, nourishes, and drives him. But you are to know that the second principle has the matrix in its power, and there alone is wisdom and understanding. Also therein now is the omnipotence, and this third principle is the second's property, not separate, but one essence in it, and with it, all over, and yet there is a birth between them, as may be seen by the rich man and Lazarus, the one being in paradise, and the other being in the original matrix, which is hell. And therefore, God generated the third principle that he might be manifested by the material world. He, having created the angels and spirits in the second principle in the paradisiacal world, they could thereby understand the eternal birth in the third principle, also the wisdom and omnipotence of God, wherein they could behold themselves and set their imaginations upon the heart of God, in which form they could remain in paradise and continue to be angels, which the devils have not done, but they intended to rise up in the matrix and domineer in great power over paradise and all angelical regions, upon which they fell out of paradise and besides were driven out of their place into restraint, so that the matrix of this world also holds them captive. For the space of this world was their angelical kingdom, where they were in the place of this world. But though we speak of the paradisiacal essence, and also of the principle of this world, of its power and wonderful birth, and what the divine and eternal wisdom is, yet it is impossible for us to utter and express it all. For the lake of the deep can be comprehended in no spirit, whether it be angelical or human. Therefore, the innumerable eternal birth and wisdom makes a wonderful eternal joy in paradise. This innumerable power and wisdom may now also be known by us in the third principle, if we will take it into our consideration. If we look upon the starry heaven, the elements and living creatures, upon trees, herbs, and grass, we may behold in the material world the similitude of the paradisiacal, incomprehensible world. For this world is proceeded out of the first root, wherein stand both the material and also the paradisiacal spiritual world, which is without beginning or transitoriness. And now, if we meditate and consider the origin of the four elements, we shall clearly find, see, and feel the original in ourselves if we are humans and not beasts, full of malice and gainsaying in the matrix of this world. 
for the original is as well known in man as in the deep of this world. Although it seems wonderful to the unenlightened one that anyone should be able to speak of the origin of air, fire, water, earth, and the starry heaven, he supposes this is impossible to be known. Thus he swims in his own mother and desires not to know it. Neither was it good for man to know it, but since the fall of Adam has cast us headlong into it, it is highly necessary for us to know it, that we may fly from the bestial man and learn to know the true man. To find this root, you must look into the matrix, and there it is wholly manifest, and you may know it in all things. For the matrix of this world stands in the eternal matrix, from which paradise and the kingdom of heaven has its origin. Now as the eternal matrix is a birth that goes forth, where in the original there is harshness, darkness, hardness, and anguish, so you may see that when the Spirit of God has kindled the inward matrix, then it becomes stirring, working, and active. When God in the first matrix moved himself to create and created the angels, he created them in paradise in the light holy matrix. But the matrix with its fiery, dark, and harsh, bitter property remained altogether hidden. For the light of God from eternity preserved it and kept it pleasant, clear, and bright. But when God moved himself to create, then it became manifested. For the angels were created out of the indissoluble band, out of the matrix, and were corporized from the moving spirit of God.